Hello everyone and welcome to Mr. Simplifies Tutorials. In this video we're going to look at Kurt Lewin's Force Field Analysis Model. Change management in a team or in an organization is always a challenging aspect wherein management needs to look at the need to implement change and the forces that are resisting this change. There are always two aspects to change management. Lewin's Force Field Analysis is a simple way to weigh the driving forces for change against the resisting forces. Loon believed that businesses need to change and adapt on a regular basis and that this is one of the most important recipes for a business's success. Now let's let's try and understand the force field analysis model graphically. As we see in the graphic here the forces driving change in the organization are weighed against the forces resisting change. Now the idea of Lewin's model is to weigh or score each factor driving and resisting change and then analyze the feasibility of change. In this example we see uh, that the forces driving change uh, are numbered 4, 6 and 8. Those are the actual scores or the, or the weights of those factors and they outweigh the forces resisting change. So change management is going to be a smoother process in this particular example. Some important points to look at is that as per Lewin's model, if the two forces are in equilibrium, then there should be no change. Now, change can only be successful if the driving forces, as we see in the example, outweigh the resisting forces. So if they're in, in equilibrium, then there should be no change. And if change is absolutely necessary, for instance, in situations where there is there is a government regulation that the uh, the company needs to comply with, then management has to find ways to reduce the resisting forces and then implement the change. Also, it's normally the senior management team that decides the scores to be assigned to each factor to be considered. Now, let's let's analyze the model using, let's simplify the model rather using an example. Uh, in this example, we consider an organization that sells and supports software products. In the organization, there's a sales department that sells products and then there's a technical department that supports and, and troubleshoots problems with the, with the software for existing customers. Now, the standard warranty for each software product is one year and to increase revenue uh, the existing sales reps are now expected to call older customers whose standard warranty of a year has run out and sell them warranty packages for three or five years. This is the change that the management is thinking of implementing now in the organization. So it's a change in behavior and it's also an added task that's been given to the sales department. Now let's try and apply the force field analysis model to this example. Uh, if we map all of the factors, let's see, the driving forces would be increased recurring revenue because customers that are no longer coming to you are now actually coming back to you. And if, if the customers get used to the concept of uh, extended warranty, then they keep coming back to you and keep renewing it. We're obviously providing better customer service and there's obviously also a pressure from increased competition that is leading the management to, to take this decision. What could be the, the resisting forces? One of the main resisting force could be the current workload of uh, the sales department and also the troubleshooting uh, department, the technical support department. Uh, one of the other resisting forces uh, could be that there's no no official training provided uh, before this change is implemented and the last resisting force could be staff attitudes. Now if we start weighing or scoring these driving and resisting forces, let's see, increased recurring revenue, obviously the highest and the most important factor driving uh, this change. So we, we give it a score of 10. Uh, better customer service. Yes, customer service can be improved by uh, uh, also by uh, by providing better quality products and this can also add to that uh, that that score so we score it a seven and then increased competition obviously a market uh, always has more and more competitors coming in and we want to stand out from the competition so we give it a score of eight now resisting forces it's a genuine resisting force 
that the current workload of both departments needs to be managed. Uh, the, the management uh, decides to give it a score of 8 and might actually think of uh, adding new staff members uh, to, uh, to, to, to lessen the, the load for the existing staff members. No training provided. Now, uh, this has been given a score of 4 because uh, it's it's not it's not like uh, it's it's completely out of the norm to ask trained representatives to uh, to make additional phone calls to existing customers it should be a part of their job anyway so this has been given a lower score staff attitude has been given a low score because this is obviously something that a software organization needs to do and it's it's up to the the member of the members of staff to understand that this is a great initiative which will generate increased revenue and it needs to be implemented so in this case it's it's quite obvious that the the driving forces far outweigh the the resisting forces and therefore the change is necessary and uh, should be implemented now when we look at that last factor the last factor of staff attitude uh, you know what what one is is driven to think about the reasons why there would be re a resistance to change the reasons for resistance to change there can be a lot lack of understanding of the reason for the change in the first place and then also the advantages of implementing it now higher revenues for an organization could actually uh, mean higher wages for the members of staff so it is it is actually advantageous to everybody in the organization in a lot of situations there's just a simple inertia to change people are often in their comfort zones they're, they're used to what they're doing and don't want to change their habits and don't want to change their uh, their routines and regular day-to-day -day work and it's it's not for everybody but there there's obviously is uh, an inertia to change for certain people in organizations at every organization there can also be lack of communication. If a change is implemented without proper communication, then there's obviously going to be resistance. So there are various reasons where, why a change can be resisted. And in every type of organization, some sort of resistant, resistance is expected to any sort of change. Okay, that was a simple concept. I hope it was clarified enough, simplified enough for you. I thank you for your attendance and as always, Please subscribe, please like this video and share this video and support content from this channel for more regular content. Thank you.